All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Hyverly. I'm a little late on this one, but the developer update just went out not too long ago for Suicide Squad. So let's break this down and see exactly what they're talking about today. So they start with the state of the game and they list off the Raising Hell issues, the Invisible Joker, the black screen issues, and the Steam Deck, right? So all these are issues. All these are things that they are aware of and they're working on fixes and improvements for these things. Invisible Joker is the one that I experienced. I know Jay Shockblast was just talking to someone who had the Steam Deck or the Linux issue. And then obviously someone had just tweeted me today that they have the black screen issue. Many of you guys in the comments have said you have the black screen issues. So obviously that's something they're aware of and something they're working on. And hopefully there's some fixes for all of these as soon as possible. Upcoming balance updates. Following player feedback during the first week of season one, we also have several gameplay and balancing changes planned for our next patch craze immunity changes enemies are no longer immune to venom frenzy craze enemies take 50 percent less damage craze immunity has been renamed to craze tolerance so this is a good change and it still kind of falls in line with what they're trying to do this season obviously with craze enemies still taking less damage they really want to push poison this season so while you can use craze and they're going to talk about obviously afflictions and status effects you know obviously with poison and craze you can still use them together though obviously you will want to be aware of kind of this number still which is 50% less damage. Pain suppression changes. Damage reduction is reduced to 50% down from 95, which is really good. This was definitely a, a very big pain point for a lot of people, myself included, over those five hours yesterday. So for me, this is a good change. Burn and poison buff. Increased damage over time for burn and poison at higher mastery levels. That's a good buff. We do appreciate that. So good stuff there battle pass xp gain increase now i had mentioned today in my video that i didn't think they were going to touch this until episode two so kudos to me for being wrong and kudos to the team for taking quick action on this one because this has been a huge pain point for a lot of people with how long it does take them to kind of go up battle pass levels so they said battle pass xp gain increase double battle pass xp from missions and i had said that i said they were probably going to increase the you know battle pass points that you're getting from missions in order to make you play the game more so right on the money with what they did totally off with how long it would take them to address it so good for them to doing that right away increase the drop chance for master items at higher mastery levels that's good means you're kind of incentivized to kind of grind higher Damage reduction from the Nightmare Stacks gained from the Tier 3 Scarecrow Infamy set. Set bonus has been increased to 20%, which is up from 10%. Now, there's a whole conversation about damage reduction and if it's broken or as you'll see later on if we're able to kind of calculate it correctly as a community this is still a good change though obviously 10 percent more is never something to scoff at you definitely want it but obviously let's talk about the rest of the block here so they go on to talk about a few things with this right where they talk about how to unlock the joker and then your episode rank and your mastery levels and strongholds which we're going to talk about but obviously it's good now to get this stuff out ahead of time but I definitely think stuff like this should have come out before the season launched, right? Because not a lot of people kind of knew what kind of grind they were kind of in for, right? And obviously, a lot of people, myself included, thought the runway to get the Joker would be a little bit easier with a little more story content, but not having to do the same missions that you've been doing in order to get a season level, which then unlocked the boss fight of the season, right? I think a lot of people were kind of taken aback by that approach. And I definitely think something like this would have been great to tell people what kind of grind they would be in for when the season launched just to get the joker right and then they go on to kind of differentiate between episode rank and the mastery level which is good and then they go on to kind of tell you guys about your mastery levels and what's happening there right kind of just you know re-walking old ground so to speak and making sure everyone has the same knowledge here now let's talk about the big one here which is going to be damage reduction now as i said earlier damage reduction is a huge hot button topic in the community with many people including people in my comments today telling me that at high mastery levels damage reduction is actually broken now basically what is happening here is that rocksteady has been telling us that we're doing the math wrong right so they kind of break down that at a thousand damage with 50 percent damage reduction you're taking 500 damage right at a thousand damage with an additional 50 percent damage reduction you're actually taking 250 so if you have basically two items that give 50 percent damage reduction 
you're not ending up with 100, you're ending up with 75. 50% from your first damage reduction, and then 50% of the remaining 50%, right? Now, obviously, they go on to say that there's never a way to get to 100 unless you're using an item that makes you pretty much invulnerable. So what does that mean? Well, it means that there's definitely a cap somewhere. So where's the cap? You know, is it 75? Is that where our cap is, right? They do kind of talk about 75 damage reduction, or is it higher? Or is damage reduction still broken even with the new calculations that they think the community is not doing, right? This has been an ongoing conversation. I would imagine it still might be. It'll be interesting to see what the math people kind of figure out here if we're actually doing it wrong or if there is something still broken within the game itself. Then they go on to say that some characters are inherently more tanky. So incursion missions where there's a lot of AoE damage, you might want to consider playing a more tanky character to push up your mastery levels. Now, this is kind of interesting as well, because I just had someone today basically tell me that, you know, to get to mastery level 200, you were forced to play King Shark. And it seems like Rocksteady agrees, right? Like some characters are more tanky. And if you don't want to use a tanky character with damage reduction and you're going to use a glass cannon build, like get good, right? So interesting to see their conversations here and their stance on it um i'd be interested to see how you guys feel about this comment and i guess damage reduction in general in this whole conversation let me know in the comments below affliction resistance now basically a lot of people may have assumed differently with affliction resistance but it's actually about the duration so if you have 50 percent affliction resistance you're frozen for 50 percent less time and now these things also are not diminishing since they work on a duration if you have two augments that both increase affliction resistance by 25 percent, then the total would actually be 50 percent reduction in duration then they go on to say what is the status effect versus an affliction. And this started, myself included, by basically mistaking that poison was going to be an affliction, but it's actually a status effect. And basically, they kind of just let people know what they are, what the difference is. This probably would have been, once again, good to know before the actual you know launch of the season there. But it is what it is. I do think they kind of did share that a little bit. And so I think maybe I was just mistaken. Obviously, when they had the stream stream and it was a video and you saw a couple of the builds there using burn and, and poison i guess you know that would have been enough to clue in there so i will take you know the full range of punishment there from you guys for getting that wrong my bad and now they talk about strongholds which is the most interesting one so to speak because strongholds for anyone who wasn't here over the last couple of weeks, there was a big question about what strongholds are. It was on pretty much every promotional image. It was on their roadmap, right? It said new activities push strongholds, and a lot of people were wondering what that's going to be. Now, strongholds are actually the phased in parts of the else world, right? And anything to do with that. And that's what they say. And I think a lot of people are pretty disappointed in that. I think one of the things that we've seen talk about, whether you agree or disagree, is that people want more to the gameplay loop, right? More variety, more story, more objectives. And people thought the strongholds were going to be a new thing. And I've seen people actually say post season one launch that strongholds are actually referenced in the game by rick flag i think it is so many of us myself included then just missed what strongholds were actually you know kind of referenced to but there was never a correction from rock city as well they kind of just let that speculation run rampant right which i feel like they probably should have had this chunk here before the season launch to get people excited you know but i i just i don't know why they wouldn't include it right cheating now this has been a big thing today if you guys miss what today has been today has been a crazy day talking about cheaters i put out a video today ign wrote an article kotaku wrote an article there's been a lot of conversation about cheating in suicide squad and honestly it's tough because as i said today you know obviously there's a fog of war when it comes to cheating and anti-cheat right you never want to tip your hand but you should be acknowledging that you are doing these things and do i think this would have happened today if there wasn't this huge coverage over it, including the DMCA strike against tricks, probably not. I don't think it would have been a thing. I think they would have more than been okay with letting that kind of, you know, be pushed under the rug and just kind of, you know, not say anything. But they go on to say today that over the last few weeks, we have identified a number of accounts that have bypassed our anti-cheat systems to gain an unfair advantage, most obviously when taking top leaderboard spots. We have now taken action against several offenders who have engaged in practices that violate our terms of service, giving them a temporary ban and resetting their accounts. Any further infractions from these accounts will result in a permanent ban. That's good. And honestly, what I said today is that's all they really have to say, right? They have to, you know, kind of tell people that this is happening. I definitely think, if I'm going to be cynical about this for a moment, I definitely think the hackers having the skins was something that they weren't planning on. If you guys remember when the MCU suits leaked, 
basically there had been so many problems with the game up until that point right and many of them did get patched but there were still many of them that didn't right but the moment that these players were able to use the mcu skins it was on a weekend i believe it was square enix acted really 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 quick it was like all hands on deck right because that affects the marketplace that affects players spending money and that is never a good thing right in my video today i said why would I pay for skins if hackers can use them for free? That just means that whatever money I'm spending is not worth it because I'm not getting the same product. They're getting all that for free and they're not being punished, but I'm being asked for $10, $20, $24, whatever it is, right? And true to what usually happens, that made them move, right? All this stuff with the skins leaking, the banners leaking, they actually moved and they put out a statement and we're supposed to believe they've been doing stuff for a few weeks. I might give them the benefit of the doubt, but of course they've been acting today on it. So that's what it is guys. And that's really all we have to talk about today when it comes to the, you know, kind of developer update. It was a pretty good one. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not going to say it was bad just for the sake of saying it's bad. There's a lot of good changes in here that are really good. It's just a matter now of like continuing this momentum, right? It's all about incremental changes and it's about fixing things more than you break, right? So if they can get all these fixes out and more without breaking more things, that's really what you need to do here. Incrementally improve where you can, and that will be noticed by the people who are still playing your game, right? Word of mouth can do some things. I don't think it can bring something back from how far Suicide Squad is, but it can still make it an acceptable game to play if they work on it. The community is being supported by the developers at that point, right? So that's really what it comes down to, you guys. And once again, if you guys enjoyed your Suicide Squad news coverage and more from this channel and myself, make sure you subscribe, like the video, leave a nice little comment. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day and night. Take care, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.